Hello everyone. In today's session, we are going to discuss uh, one sample example to show the relationship between what is a regular language, a contextual language and an unrestricted grammar. Okay, so I'm just going to take one example that is an, uh, a regular language and I'm going to construct a push down or like a finite automata. Like whenever it is a regular language, it can be accepted by a finite automata. For the same language, I'm going to show how to construct a push down automata and I'm going to show how to construct a Turing machine too. Okay, so which means that whenever the language is regular, we are able to construct a push down automata and a Turing machine for it. And whenever the language that we have taken is a context free grammar, then you are able to construct a push down automata and Turing machine. So that is your Chomsky hierarchy relationship. Okay. So here, this is the language that we are going to consider for our representation. So in this language, uh, I'm uh, like language of alphabet over the al uh, over the alphabet A and B. And here the string consists of A, B, A as substring. So this is the problem that you're going to take. So whenever a language consists of what all the set of strings that are allowed in this A, B, B, and it can have anything in prefix and anything in suffix, and it goes on. Okay, so the language representation can be given as A, B, B. In the prefix, we can have either A or B the whole star. And in the suffix also, we can have A or B the whole star. So this is the language representation. So for this language, I'm going to show how to construct a NFA DFA. I'm just going to start with a deterministic finite automata, how to construct a deterministic finite automata for it, and how to construct a push down automata, and how to construct a Turing machine for the same example. So it means whenever the language that you have taken is a regular language, then we are able to construct a push down automata and Turing machine for it. So this is actually to show the relationship like this. So you remember the Chomsky hierarchy that we have discussed, right? This is your Chomsky hierarchy. So when you have a regular language and for this regular language, it is enclosed inside your context free language and it is enclosed inside your context sensitive language and it is enclosed in your unrestricted language. Okay, so whenever a regular language is taken, you are it, it can be solved by any of this automata, any of the mathematical model over there. Okay, so this is the relationship and to understand that relationship, you can use this session. Okay, so first uh, we are going to construct a deterministic finite automata. So deterministic finite automata doesn't have any external memory unit. So the transition will look like this. Uh, the input, the minimum input to the uh, system here is ABB. So to process as uh, ABB as it is, we need four states since we are going to take one input at a time and you're going to make a transition from one state to other state. Okay, so this is how your transition will look like. Your input is ABB. And the input that we have taken is exactly ABB, you'll have a transition like this. Okay, so now we have to look forward like when it is in DFA, what happened? On each and every state, on each and every input symbol, we should have a transition. So I'll just name the state as one, two, three, four. And in state one, when the input is A, we have a transition. And what happens if the input is B? Actually, we need A, B, B as a substring. So in the prefix, we can have any number of Bs. We can stay here. So for all Bs, we'll stay here. When it is A, B, B again, we are going to reach the final state. What happened in state two? State two is a place where already we have processed one A and we are waiting for another B, B to reach the final state. And in case, if I have some A's here, it isn't going to disturb any system, right? If the next two input are BB, then we can reach the final state. So we can stay here. Okay, so if the input is A, and if the next two inputs are BB, then it is in the prescribed format, like the needed format as it is, then we can accept it. Okay, so here, Already one A is processed. If the next two input is also A, if the next two inputs are BB, it has the form of A, B, B as a substring. So we can go to final state here. Now coming to this place, here is a place where we have already processed one A, B and we are waiting for a B. And in case if you have a B here, I'm sorry, B transition is already fine. If you have an A, then what happened? If you have an A, then we have to find for B, B again. Okay, so in after a b instead of a b, if you if you have a b, it is following the constraint like we have a b b. We are reaching final state, but instead of a b, if you have an a, 
then we have to check for the next two input as whether it is db and checking for the input as db actually starts from this place so we'll have a transition like this if you have a a here and if the next two inputs are bb we are going to the final state okay now coming to the last transition last state uh, in the final state you have to find a transition for a and b and final state is a place where only only in your input if you have found a b b in a sequence then only we can reach this final state so and our language should consist of a b b as a substring so after reaching this we can have anything in the suffix either a or b does not going to disturb see after finding a b b and if the following sequence if it consists of a or b it doesn't matter we can reach the final state as it is okay and in order to verify the working of it we can take some example like i'll start with um, a b a b b okay and uh, the transition starts from q not state i'll just do an instantaneous description kind of thing so q not when the input is a where you have the transition q not sorry it is state one i'm sorry the transition actually starts from one so one when the input is a it goes to state two and the remaining inputs are b a b b okay and two when the input is b two when the input is b it goes to state three and the remaining inputs are a b b and what happened three when the input is a it goes to two and the remaining inputs are b b okay now state two when the input is b two when the input is b it is going to state three and the remaining input is a single b and state three when the input is b it goes to state four and all the inputs are processed so after processing all the input if the transition is in final state the input is accepted okay so this is the deterministic finite automata for the given example so we have constructed an finite automata we have taken a regular expression constructed a finite automata so this is not a bigger deal right now coming to the place where you want to construct a push down automata for it okay so how does your push down automata works you will have a stack as a memory unit and each time you have to push some element into stack and you can pop, pop it out too okay so for these kind of transitions we can use the same transition diagram and without disturbing anything in the stack okay so in state 1 i can have the transition like this i the minimum input taken for this will remain as it is okay so from starting from the state 1 so first step is to push z not into stack so that is going to be your mandatory condition so in this place i can have the transition as when uh, epsilon without crossing any of the input symbol if stack consists of nothing push this z not into stack and the next step on your transition is going to be the same so b if my first input is b and stack consists of z not you are not going to push anything into stack the z not that is taken out will be pushed back okay the mandatory condition is this transition okay not the element that you are going to push into stack so when the input is exactly a b b we are reaching the final state and your stack may consist of z not you can put the z not back stack may consist of z not put the z not back and stack may consist of z not put the z not back since the transition has to be defined on a stack symbol so that we cannot change each time one element from the stack will be popped out and we are going to make the transition and we are going to do some modification in the stack so that we cannot change so only thing is if you are able to construct a dfa diagram for it then it is well and good with this dfa diagram without disturbing the stack element we can use the same diagram over here okay so q2 in state 2 you can write the same transition when the input is a stack consists of z not put the z not back into stack and in the state 4 when the input is a stack consists of z not put the z not back and the input is b, b stack consists of z not put the z not back okay so i'll just take one example i just return the same transition but each step we have a stack element i'm just going to push the same stack element back into stack i'll take the same uh, input as it is so here state 1 when the input is a b a b b and initially we have a, we have to push the z not into stack now state 1 when the input is a and the stack consists of z not we are going to push the z not into stack and we are making a transition to state 2 one on a comma z not right you are making a transition to state 2 and the remaining input will be b a b b and the stack will consist of z not as it is that will not be changed now state 2 on b state 2 when the input is b we are going to make a transition to state 3 
and the remaining input will be a b b and the z not that is taken from stack will remain in the stack as it is you're not going to make any modification here now three on a i have been divided see there is a loop from three on a it is a z not z not okay so three when the input is a we are making a transition to state two and the remaining input will be b b and stack consists of z not and two when the input is b we are making a transition to state three and the remaining input will be b z not will remain in the stack as it is now state three when the input is b we are reaching the state as four and all the inputs are processed and z not is there in the stack so at the end of your input we are in the final state the input is accepted the input will be accepted by either making uh, your stack empty or moving to final state any one way is fine and here we are moving to final state right the input will be accepted so whenever a regular language is given you try to construct a dfa for it and in that dfa you can add this last two transitions z not z not the stack element will remain as it is since the problem can be solved without using stack either the stack is present there or not your problem can be solvable by push down automata okay so this is your push down automata representation and the next one is how to construct a turing machine for it so what is a turing machine here so turing machine will be having infinite tape as a memory unit and whenever you start the transition the input will be written in the tape from left to right it is split into cells okay let me take the same input as a b a b b and the remaining symbols will be blank symbol and the transition actually starts from the starting state on your read write head focus on the first element so this is how your transition actually starts and when you have a b b occurring in sequence we are reaching final state so the number of states needed will be the same as that of your dfa or your push down automata so when the input is exactly a b b we are reaching final state this will be your final state and this will be your starting state i'm just going to have the number as 1 2 3 4 and here the extra input is the tape symbol okay the tape symbol and the tape symbol will be either modified or we are not going to modify and all it is our wish so we are just going to find whether abb is present in the uh, tape or not so no need to modify anything okay and we are going to make a move we are going to uh, start from the starting symbol in the resultant one we are going to verify whether abb is present or not okay so if it is a move right if it is b b will remain as it is move right if it is b b will remain as it is move right okay so the transition will remain as it is state one when it is going to read the input a if it is a the next two element it is going to verify whether it is b b so it is a right side move okay so in state one if you have a b it is not an issue right i can stay here until i found this a b b in a sequence i can stay here so you have to refer the dfa diagram very well for understanding this so when you have a b b will remain as it is we are just going to make a right side move and in this place on b we have a transition when you have an a a will remain as it is move right so any a's we have it is not an issue if the next two element are bb we are going to accept it and here in this place if you have a b b we are going to accept it instead of b if you have an a you have a back move so if it is next a b b we are going for the accepting state so a will remain as it is and you are going to move right and turing machine is a very special kind of machine like uh, here we have an acceptance state so here four will be your q accept state so whenever transition enters the acceptance state we are going to accept the input uh, we are not sure like whether it does it needs that we have to go till the end of your input and find the transition see what happened in the previous two uh, automatas in case of your push down automata on or, or your uh, nfa or dfa you are going to reach till the end of your transition right but that doesn't matter over here when it comes to turing machine so whenever a transition enters into an accepting state the input will be accepted so from there on you don't want to define the transitions okay so i'll take the same example starting from state 1 when the input is i'll just represent here state 1 when the input is a it goes to state 2 and state 2 when the input is b it goes to state 3 and state 3 when the input is a it goes to state 2 again and 2 when the input is b it goes to state 3 and 3 when the input is b you're going for the state 4 then the input is accepted 
okay so it doesn't matter matters that we are going to come till the end of your input and we are going to find the transition so whenever it enters an accepting state the input will be accepted okay so this is how we construct an a uh, finite automata a uh, pushdown automata and a turing machine for a regular expression so whenever the language is regular we are able to construct all kind of automata so that is the final justification that is needed and in order to find how to construct it it is preferable to do a dfa and we can replicate the same as a pushdown automata or a turing machine with a stack symbol or a tape symbol okay so that is nothing is going to modified so we are going to use the same transition diagram and we can represent it like this okay Thank you.